surprise win. Last night in Texas's 6th Congressional District, Trump's pick for a vacant congressional seat lost in a runoff against what was described as a Reagan Republican. But as only the former president could do, he's claiming a win, telling Axios today, quote, this is not a loss. The big thing is we had two very good people running that were both Republicans. That was the win. We know the former president isn't the most graceful loser, but should the GOP take this as a sign that his coattails are not the ones to ride in 2020, 2022 that is. His track record for endorsements has been good. 2018, 59% of his endorsements were successful. In 2020, he helped 144 candidates win. That's a 76% success rate. Count the Georgia Senate races where both Republicans lost, thus giving up control of the Senate. Mr. Trump is one and three since losing last November. Joining us now from Texas, longtime Republican campaign head, Matt Mackiawak. Matt, we appreciate it. Uh, the Drudge Report had the following headline, the Don losing his touch. Is that a fair critique? You know, this was an unusual situation. He was apparently kind of hoodwinked into getting into this race by the Club for Growth, the president, David McIntosh, a friend of mine, former congressman from Indiana. And it kind of, he kind of went above Trump's advisors. And so in this case, look, Trump didn't know Susan Wright in North Texas. Uh, she did know his late, her late husband, Ron Wright, who died in January. Uh, but at the end, at the end of the day, Trump's endorsement has to be fully utilized for it to make a difference. He didn't go in the district and do a rally. He didn't uh, do any fundraising for her. Mm -hmm. He did three things. He released a statement, he did a robocall, and then the night before the election, he did a teletown hall. Well, by then, she's already down in early voting, including in Tarrant County and Fort Worth, where she's from. So it was, a, it was too little, too late. On the other hand, Susan Wright did not raise money effectively, did not campaign actively, and Jake Elsey ran a great campaign and deserved a win. So I don't think it tells us that Trump's you know, done in the Republican Party, but I also don't think uh, that it's a good sign that he decided to, to kind of give such a weak endorsement and not make his endorsement matter. That was a tour de force uh, of going through this race, Matt. We appreciate it. And the other thing that people have pointed to in this race is that there was a small turnout, and because this wasn't a Republican primary, it was a runoff election, Democrats and independents can vote. So what I'm guessing you're saying from this is that if you had a real Republican primary come summer of next year, when we're gearing in to 2022, things look a lot different. That's right. And I think you're, you're going to see uh, the former president, I think, get really more invested and more involved in races where people that he really doesn't like uh, may be vulnerable. Look at think about Liz Cheney in Wyoming. Uh, think about Adam Kinzinger in Illinois, both members of the House who voted for impeachment, both of whom are now serving on the select committee on the January 6th insurrection. It's, it's almost like, you know, our rundown because somebody who's challenging Adam Kinzinger is coming up just in a minute after you. Yep. Uh, he still draws these big rallies, and we've got pictures. I think these are rallies from 2020, but we just think about a couple of weeks ago he was giving speeches, and the lines go around. Let's put aside whether or not he can or cannot play kingmaker, because that can have different effects. Can he pretty much be a spoiler for anybody in the Republican Party? Can he be a spoiler for Liz Cheney or Adam Kinzinger? I think if they have good, uh, effective uh, challengers who run good campaigns, yes, he can make a difference. Look, he can help you earn media. He can help you raise money. He can help you turn out people. He can help you create enthusiasm. Those are all real things. He's got a massive amount of data. Uh, if he chooses to run a serious political organization, he can be very, very effective. How, I don't how think we know that yet. How different will his endorsement play? And we've got to separate this between Republican primaries and the general. Yes, very differently. He's going to be very limited, I think, in where he can make a big difference in general elections next year. That said, I think he can make a very big difference in primaries uh, in, in many states, in House races, Senate races, governor's races. He's going to be endorsing his, mm. his friends and allies. Uh, he's going to be going after his perceived enemies in the House in particular. Uh, and then he's going to look at seats where he, think he thinks he can support someone who supports the America First agenda. But I think you're going to see him be more effective in primaries. In general elections, he's going to be very limited. You might see him in the Georgia Senate race. You might see him in a couple other places here or there. But he's going to be limited what he can do next fall, I think. Matt, a fascinating conversation. As we said, a tour de force as you broke down uh, the race there in Texas. Thanks so much. Great conversation. Good to see you. And we'll be having you back. Thanks, Lynn. Congrats on the new show. Good to see you again. Thank you. You as well. One could bet a lot in Vegas very safely 